Good afternoon. I am Steve Swain, a professor of music here at Dartmouth College and the director of the college's Montgomery Fellows Program. We gather today on the ancestral homelands of the Western Abenaki, who were and are part of the Wabanaki Confederation. The Montgomery Fellows Program brings exceptional people to an exceptional place. That exceptional place, of course, is Dartmouth College, but it is also the house on Occam Pond, which was purchased in 1977 through the generosity of Kenneth Montgomery, class of 1925, and his wife, Harl. Our fellow today, the college's 266th resident fellow, comes to share with us her life and wisdom. I met today's fellow back in the spring of 2019 when she was here teaching a course as a visiting professor. We explored together the possibility of inviting her back as a Montgomery Fellow and set spring of 2021 as the time of her return. For reasons we all know, we needed to postpone her residency, but she is here now and we are all grateful. I have had other opportunities to meet three of her colleagues whom you will meet today. I've asked one of them, Jonathan Smolin, the Jane and Raphael Bernstein Professor in Asian Studies and the former chair of Dartmouth's Middle Eastern Studies program to introduce, introduce both our fellow and her conversation partners. Among Jonathan's many accomplishments is the publication last year of his translation of Ethan Abdel Kudus's novel, I Do Not Sleep. I treasure Jonathan as a colleague and as an educator of and guide to our students. Please join me in welcoming Professor Smolin. Hi everybody, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it is really quite an honor and quite a delight to introduce Hoda Barakat here as our Montgomery Fellow. Um, she was born in Beirut, grew up in Paris, and then returned to Beirut during the Lebanese Civil War from 1975 to 1990. Um, she has written some of the most magnificent works of modern Arabic fiction that have ever been written. The Stone of Laughter, um, which was uh, published in 1990, is an absolutely brilliant postmodernist take on the breakdown of language and the way that the breakdown of language represents the, represented the breakdown of society and, and, uh, uh, and civilization um, of human discourse during the Lebanese Civil War. Uh, it is truly one of the, the great works of, of world literature, not just Arabic literature. Um, and her uh, most recent novel, most recent novel, uh, Nightmare, won the um, uh, the Booker Award, a very uh, a long, uh, well deserved, uh, uh, very well deserved honor. Um, of course, she taught with us here in, in 2019, and we are absolutely delighted to have her back uh, this this spring. Uh, it is also an honor to introduce um, uh, my colleague Tarek El Aris, who is the uh, James Wright Professor here at Dartmouth College uh, and Professor of Middle Eastern Studies. A man of many talents, of many uh, subfields, of many theories. He is also uh, the author of um, uh, The Trials of Arab Modernity and Leaks, Hacks, and Scandals. Both works are magnificent. Uh, but Leaks, Hacks, and Scandals has, a, has a, a particularly rich place in exploring many of our concerns today of, uh, of exposure, scandal, and, and leaks. Um, he has a forthcoming book. I don't know the title yet, but uh, what is the title? Water on Fire. And I urge you to, to uh, pick up a copy as soon as it's available. Um, and it is also a pleasure to introduce Ezzedine Fashir, who is a man of, of many talents. Uh, he is a former Egyptian ambassador who uh, also worked at the UN uh, in, and participated in high-level negotiations uh, in the Israel-Palestine peace process, among other things. He is a contributing um, op-ed writer for the Washington Post. He is uh, one of the Arab world's best-selling novelists uh, and has the, the uh, honor of um, writing what many believe to have been the, prof the novel that prophesized the future of the Arab Spring, um, written soon after the events of 2011, but really um, 
described in incredible um, uh, detail the, the trajectory of what would come. And hopefully we'll be able to read this in English soon. Uh, I am translating it, excuse me. Um, in addition to these things, he is uh, also uh, an incredible educator uh, and one of the best that Dartmouth has uh, in the classroom. So please, everybody, join me in welcoming our three today for this incredible conversation. Uh, welcome, Huda, uh, again to Dartmouth. Uh, this conversation today uh, about where does writing come from is, is a conversation uh, that I've been following in your work and uh, that also we've been having at various, in various contexts through talks, through writings, through contributions to think about this question of writing and, and especially to think about this, what Jonathan started out by saying, this tone of la laughter, this, this notion of breakdown of, of writing or language as something that is not coherent or something that is also reflecting perhaps a political context or a state of displacement, a state of deep, deep, deep displacement. And, and also as a literary critic who's, who's very interested in, in, in modern Arabic literature and, and thinking about the novel and uh, as something that you know, we've been taught traditionally to think about it as something that allows us to project a coherent image of the subject, of the self, perhaps also of the community, of, of the nation, uh, and also of, of the language, something that also allow us to, to think of language as something that is standardized, that, that, that has a particular function, a particular power to represent, to engage uh, reality. And, and so I feel like in, in most of your work, you, we have this, you know, this, this kind of critique of this project of the novel through the novel. You know, you're writing these novels, but also you're, you're kind of constantly questioning these, where, where does writing come from, or, or is the novel really about this coherence that we imagine, uh, you know, the, imagine uh, the, the novel to represent. But in your last novel, you take this to a whole other level. And, and uh, already, Barry the Lail, uh, literally the, the night post or the night mail, but the translation is Voices of the Lost, is a series of letters that are found by, not by the people who wrote them, but people who happen to find them in airports and, and hotels. And I would like to just read the first kind of couple of lines of that novel and then ask you my question. <laughs> Uh, dear, since letters must always begin with dear, then dear it is. I've never written a letter in my life, not a single one. There was a letter in my mind which I brooded over for years, rewriting it in my head again and again, but I never wrote it down. After all, my mother could hardly read, and so I expect she would have taken my letter to one of the village men with enough education to read it to her. That would have been a disaster, though. And anyway, then I learned that the village had flooded when the dam collapsed. The whole village was underwater. I don't know where the villagers went or whether they were moved to another place. It was the latest thing in technology, the dam the president had ordered to be built to water the lands that had turned into desert. I've probably told you the story of the dam. I don't remember now, and that's not the issue anyway. Uh, this is the opening of, of Voices of the Lost, and of course here we have the letter, so we don't have the novel, we have the letter that could have been written, that might not have been read by the person to which it's addressed, so there is a discrepancy there. But also there are references to the village, that also the homeland, the address is no longer fixed, stable. And, and there is a reference to a dam, and of course we're thinking Aswan Dam, we're thinking perhaps we're talking about Nasser, we're talking about Egypt, we're talking about some Arab modernity Tunisia. project, or Tunisia. So, so I just, if you want to, Think about the borderland, this idea of writing from the borderland. If we want to talk about how 
it's evolving in your work? Or where are we today with Voices of the Lost, having started with Zairat, having started with Hajar al dahik And where are we today in this, in this kind of disconnectedness, this, this jointedness, this placement that, um, that you, you follow in your work? It's a very, very big question. <laughs> a long because, one, too. Uh, no, I mean, I start uh, writing uh, uh, my first novel. I was uh, still in Beirut, living in Beirut. But uh, I think uh, the borders, it's not an affair of geographic. I, I, when I uh, start to write this novel, this first novel, uh, I feel now, I'm sure now, that I was in some borders before leaving Beirut. It was the, the border of uh, my, my, my identity, um, my relation with, with the other, with my family, with the military groups, with my friends, with the line, uh, the demarcation line, with all, with all the, the 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 movement, we we uh, uh, we were we was always on border from someone or some village or some. Uh, cities uh, in war. So it was always like having borders, but in movement. But I myself, when I start to, to write this novel, because it uh, takes a very long time to finish it, uh, it it's um, my feeling that my antenna, uh, like a human being, has a very big difficulty to understand. So when I start to write, it was like uh, in, in total uh, darkness. So the, the main character, uh, it is not me, it is not a woman, it's not a man, it is not, it's someone on, on the borders of the possibility and on the border of he, his own uh, uh, s sexual identity. And I, it was like uh, I was hearing to this voice. I, I don't know on the fact, on the reality, I don't know a Khalil. So I invite, I invent Khalil. But it's like to be he is a gay, so he is between me and the others, between me, like a female, and the sense of virility, to uh, between on the border between uh, why I stop to to discuss with the other because I stopped when I yeah maybe because I stopped to talk I start to write. But it was like uh, taking Khalil by his, by his hand and asking, ask him, asking him to show me, to show me uh, where he can go, where he can stop, what, what uh, he gonna, gonna be able to exp ex experience. Experiment. 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 So uh, every page was like um, like being uh, f from borders to another borders, and it was also my language. It was also stop. Uh, uh, it is. It wasn't a decision. But for me, all this literature talking about love, the country, and 
uh, be proud about uh, the past of Lebanon and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, until now we have Feirouz, for example. For us, it is uh, a meat. It is not only uh, a cantatrice. It is not only a diva. So we 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 exaggerate always our past. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, replace the history by meat. So uh, we was already on the borders of the realities. There is no reality in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. Until now, we failed to have, for example, uh, 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 a history book for the elementary uh, classes. Because we are not, uh, uh, we, we are not okay. We 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 are, we we are not okay on the definition about uh, our modern history. So it is like being always between a kind of uh, of meat and sacred before uh, between past and uh, history and meat. Be, be, between uh, the sense of uh, vira, vir, virality, uh, of uh, virility, and uh, and femininity, uh, uh, a woman should. Um, yani there is some classic figure on uh, on women in war. They are always uh, giving uh, giving life. They are not. Uh, Violent. I discovered too many things, and uh, and it was uh, cracking always some doors, some mm -hmm. uh, barrage mm -hmm. because barriers, barriers. Uh, so uh, uh, so even the the language was very n new. Uh, but Huda, I want to say, like Khalil, he called you and, and you took him by the hand. Mm. And he was, um, he, he, he embodied this, this borderland between, you know, and, and perhaps he wanted to be rescued from the violence mm. that did not leave room for anything that is on the border, mm. that wanted things to be either with one camp or the other, you know, to have very clear, clearly, it's de to choose. clearly demarcated. But at the end, you also abandoned Khalil. Khalil yeah. falls, falls yeah. in the sense, in the biblical sense as well. Like he, he actually yeah. is consumed by the violence. Yes, when you are by yourself, when you are an individual, an individual. Uh, um, into a society in crisis, very, very high experience of violence. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, make a game with uh, your project. You, you cannot have a project. You cannot have the, the reality to, to also to defend yourself. And you are open uh, to all the uh, kind of aggression. aggression. So this uh, Khalil, uh, when, when I leave it, when I leave Khalil at the end, maybe at the, the, the last uh, page, uh, it was like uh, telling uh, him adieu, but with a very big sad in my heart because uh, he fall when when he understand that he has to choose, and uh, as a gay, he cannot be uh, uh, defending her innocence, uh, uh, his innocence. So when he erupt uh, 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 the neighbor, uh, raped, raped the, the neighbor, raped the neighbor. Yani, when he tried to be a man, for me, he, he was losing his soul. So I, I tell Khalil uh, a goodbye, adieu, because I, I cannot, uh, I'm just a woman, 
uh, who write, and I, I can not rescue. Uh, I, I can uh, do any more anything to you. I love you, but I have to leave you there. So uh, uh, maybe I don't know if uh, it was a, a good uh, a good end, but I haven't another uh, end for him. But I maybe in the other uh, novels, I take uh, uh, I take uh, uh, other characters. Uh, they maybe are uh, the the brothers of Khalil and me. Yani it's uh, like uh, every every uh, every novel. It's a new adventure to to explore another kind of borders. Yani where I am and. Uh, what is the dis displacement, like said? Yani, you know, where is the 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 uh, where is the the la terre? The ground, the earth, solid. No, the earth. Where is the earth uh, become now behind me, and what kind of earth I have? Now to to confront to on this, <clears throat> is there anybody or anything in your novels that you actually rescued at the end? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, I don't believe uh, writers can rescue anybody. They, they, uh, they. In my case, because I'm not the kind of uh, writer. They believe in conviction, and they have a cause to defend, or a real, or verite to to rev to revelate to the people. I'm not the kind of uh, uh, of prophet uh, writer. I, I, I have. Uh, these voices and and mine to just to 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 tell uh, what what is uh, what make us suffering. It is not a project of rescue, and maybe there is other. Uh, uh, writers, they rescue the population, or the, they have uh, like a mission to to. But I'm not this kind. Yeah, but without going all the way to kind of missionary novels, but where would where would you say the hope comes from in your novels? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe the the. Only hope for me is to write beautiful things. Even if and it's very, very sad. A yes. kind of a closed system where, because you mentioned borders, and my feeling is, yes, it's you know the voices, the places, the characters are at the border, but they seem to be always, including Lebanon. It's like on the other side of the border, like you crossed, mm. and you're leaving behind. So the sense I get is constant loss because my my own uh, story it's a constant loss yani uh, yeah, i don't want to tell you the story of my life Go ahead. it's no <laughs> <laughs> this is no, what you do for a living no it is yeah but it is not interesting hmm. yani me Sorry. like hoda barakat and it but me i have Many people, maybe in my head, maybe they are just the voices. Uh, we we um, continue to to yeah, I need to open doors, but it is uh, never uh, the 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 heaven door. It is it is not uh, yeah, I need the 
the hope is always had had to be like uh, <coughs> like a little project of uh, of light. Uh, the place I, pardon, the 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 place I mean, the country I had lived uh, uh, continued to crumble. I cannot, I cannot even all the area for me, and a little now of the world. I mean, the, the, it is it is like. Um, Yani, I hope I I I, I see uh, I don't see the reality and I cannot imagine what it's gonna be. Uh, but I'm not an uh, an uh, optim <laughs> optimist person, and maybe with my first loss, it was uh, like a kind of destiny. Yani, I even the the Lebanese, the other Lebanese. And deep, deep on their on on their um, mind and heart, they never uh, uh, understand what what is uh, you know, what is this real story. And they are they still um, you know, they 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 still. Uh, uh, Yeah, on the on the on, on the kind kind of of darkness. Yes, it's uh, too many uh, area of loss. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sorry. But Could I be a bit more annoying? Yeah. <clears throat> you say generally in Lebanon, we and maybe in the Arab world, we kind of live in the past, and we glorify the past, and we have all this myth about the past. Fairuz, as an example, right? Aren't you doing the same, except with the loss and the civil war and the collapse? I mean, the civil war ended. No. Lebanon continues to crumble. The whole world has been crumbling for a very long time. But we continue to live. You move to Paris. You live in Paris for, have been there for a very long time. But you seem to be still living in the civil war, in the active civil war that has been in the, in the collapse. Mm. So aren't you also living in the past, in a way? Certainly. But uh, you know, when you schlondor our, uh, uh, our friend, because he become now a friend. <laughs> Volker Schlondor, the German filmmaker who was here last week. Yeah. I heard you admired his film a lot. <laughs> No, no, really, we become friends. Uh, uh, I'm gonna see him in Paris also, so we have uh, something to Round do together. Two. <laughs> no, because when you, uh, he he said, uh, when you, uh, when you <clears throat> want, uh, you know, when you live uh, even a, li a little. Uh, time into a war, the war, the war uh, don't gonna leave you anymore. So it is not only because uh, I I live uh, in in the past. Uh, I and I I I I love to to tell you that I'm not in Paris. And I'm I'm living in Paris because. I I had to leave Lebanon. I don't know why, because of certain fear, and because I had two children to take it away from the violence. But I never really uh, leave Lebanon. I do nothing in Paris. I don't have a plan. I I don't have a, a any bon. A, and France was very good and very generous to me, and uh, they honored you. Yeah, they honor, honored me, and I'm I become maybe 
uh, a part of the uh, cultural thing, but I wasn't there to make any uh, kind of glory. I was there only to stop to be in Beirut, but uh, uh, without really a goal to, or like a um, but, or a career, or, uh, so I'm, I'm always wondered, Yani, I'm always surprised when I open my window not to see Beirut. <laughs> yani, why? Yeah, I'm not very admirative. Admirative? I'm not very admirative of Paris. It is not a plus for me. Paris is just a place, calm, there is no violence, <laughs> and to be really a free woman without my tribe, without my religion, without my uh, very big uh, uh, militians, or uh, because I, yani it's very complicated to, to describe uh, how many borders you have to, you know, when you have, for example, a cousin, you, you, you know this cousin uh, you raised together, and you love this guy very, you know, he is really very close to you, and uh, one of these days, you discover that he, he is a sniper, and he is sniper on the Co co uh, le côté, uh, on, the on the side, side where you live, yani, you can be a victim of. <laughs> bon. The question is, he's still your cousin, you love him, or you, you don't la love him anymore? <laughs> Do you, uh, can you understand uh, how he become a sniper? At the same time, if you are in a very uh, bad situation, if you are arrested on one barrage, checkpoint, checkpoint by a militian, <coughs> you can call him and tell him, uh, come and uh, rescue me. Yani, you know, it, where is the border of this pass? Yani, uh, yani, uh, to try to respond to, to your question, when you, when you are able to decide that the, the past it's is over. now a, a, a past. Yeah. I mean, in a way... Yeah, it, yeah. For me, it is not really a past. Yeah. I'm not a new woman when I went to Paris. I do nothing. In Paris, yani I'm not. Uh, yani I have a, a French passport, but I I'm not a French woman, and I, I never. Uh, and I'm very sad. Why my granddaughter don't talk Arabic, uh, Arabic, and don't listen to Feyruz to spell on Feyruz. Yani to tatabzo al Feyruz. And this first novel. I really try and uh, and broke this meat of Feyruz. Mm. And it was maybe maybe until now the 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 only writer who dare uh, who dare tell uh, yani, you know, not beautiful things about Feyruz and to be ironic. After that, many years after that, his own son, our here, uh, Ziyad Rahbani, Arudri says a Marian. He, he. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, without talking about, I mean, I, I think what you're saying also is that this distinction between the past and the present or the question of temporality is collapsed. It's not, you know, it, there is no real kind of border also that demarcates the past from the present or, or the f let alone the future. I mean, the future is completely yani, out of the question. No, it's a kind of... Yeah. It's also the past. 
yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's also your version, version, yeah. version about, about this, um, this future, uh, because uh, for me there is yeah. also a future. Yani mm -hmm. I'm without future. But I, I have my proper, yani yeah. my. Mm. It's not the ideological future that we think about. It's not the, the future based on the theories of history that project no, some no, sort of no. you know, progress, hope, salvation, things, no, because, things uh, that I, happen. I, I didn't found a, a real philosopher to convince me. Mm -hmm. And they stop already, the philosopher, they stop already now to invent a system to give me hope. And when I, when I uh, want to read uh, uh, some philosopher I respect, I discover he, suicide, he commits suicide <laughs> or, or he becomes yeah, mad. mad. The, the Nietzsche, jusqu'à yeah. au dernier français. Mm. So. I mean, but I think, so if we think of Stone of Laughter, your earlier work, but also Disciples of Passion, and we come to, to where we are now, to Voices of the Lost and what you are working on right now. I mean, I have no, my interest in your work has always been, I feel like you, you stage a model of violence and you condemn it, but you also show it to us in all its monstrosity, in all its brutality. You are really, you show it in a very raw and un, you know, unambiguous ways. And, and it's hard, it's hard for readers to actually see this, you know. We might, because we always find ways to, to, to disavow certain things or, or to hide them because we can't face them, and you show it to the reader. But what is different now? Where are we now? Has, has in, in, this, in this system of violence, in the system uh, that, that creates the monster or that allows us to see how the human is actually collapsing, falling. What, what is different now from the violence of, that made Khalil collapse in, in Stone of Laughter? Are we in a different moment? Or are, or are you experiencing it as a different moment today? You know, I, I'm going to be very simple. I'm not a thinker. The other have to think for me. and. Communique, communique with me what they discover, and and for, for, you know, for, for the moment, I don't think you know, there is a thinker uh, elaborating yeah. a, a system to take you like this and to tell you uh, wake up, uh, we have some uh, solution and we have. Uh, so I'm not a thinker, and I'm. I should take it short. Okay. okay. And and uh, and I don't have a system de pensée. I don't. I, I just have, like I said, a kind of uh, antenna, and my antenna, uh, uh, it's uh, if 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 we. Uh, we want to talk about my novels. There is some, uh, always some, uh, 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 step, step, and uh, always there is some step to go, uh, uh, to go. Uh, um, to experiment, to experiment something. The big difference between the first novel and the last one, it's the, the, the uh, Khalil was trying to communicate his sufferings or his um, uh, his uh, tentative to 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 hope or uh, the 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 experience to uh, to. Um, to have to save 
his innocence. But in the last novel, nobody talked to nobody. And there is no, um, there is no address. There is no name. There is no complete letter. And the letter, even when the, the, the character is, uh, uh, is writing his letter, uh, he knows uh, the letter don't, don't gonna arrive to who uh, his right to address you. Address to. Uh, uh, plus, you know, more than, than this, uh, he lie, and it is not a kind of letter you, 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 you write because you want to uh, tell your uh, reality or what, uh, what is happening to your life. You are not sincere even when you know that the other gonna not receive it. Yani it's a high point of solitude. Now, why I choose this kind of, of uh, um, characters, of uh, letters, really I don't know. Maybe it starts with looking to the millions of uh, people walking, uh, walking, uh, uh, yani, or, The refugees. The refugees, yani, know how they leave the 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 uh, the mother later uh, mère, yani. Motherland. The motherland, you know, they 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 try death, but they don't want to return to this horrible country, beloved country. Yani, there is a notion very new about uh, what is mean our earth. What is kind of, um, of relation, uh, wh what kind of connection we still had, have to our, uh, uh, to our, uh, attends, je cherche le mot, to our, uh, Batn al Raham. Womb. Womb uh, 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 of our mother. Where is the mother? Yani we, we, yani, as the, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the idea to, to listen to these people, they, 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 they march, they, uh, <laughs> They're walking They're cross walking borders. Trans border and without having any uh, any goal or any uh, or any uh, uh, hey. place to to stop. Yeah. They are uh, like in Bible. Yani they yani, you know they uh, and all all and. They they know that all the borders are closed, is, are closed but they still uh, 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 walking. And it's it's maybe uh, a new yeah. version of hope. Yeah, but also it's a it's a it's a reconfiguration of what identity means. I mean, in, in some way, when you read Voices of the Lost. You say, what does identity mean? What does belonging mean? Like you always criticize these notions in your books. You always there was never a, you know a romantic notion of identity ever. I'm against. Uh, but now it's it's almost like it's gone to a whole other level. Like now we are we've entered. Uh, it's yes. not just the violence of the Lebanese civil war and sectarianism no. and tribalism. And and you know, but now it's almost. We're gonna talk about it, our the next next uh, month. Conference. Yes, Huda prepared the text for us called. Can I tell them the name? 
limbus. So, Be yeah. Because and I feel we are in limbus. Yani, we, we will talk about it after. Next month, yeah. May 24th. Take a break. I have a question that I'm sure you've been asked this question a million times. I think every writer gets this question in almost every interview. Yeah. But I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> and I hope I'll get a different answer. That's how I'll optimistic try. I am. I don't okay. promise. So um, you don't have much hope that writing will actually change anything. You generally you're not optimistic. You don't make serious money out of writing. <laughs> From time to time. You don't care much about <laughs> glory and that stuff. Maybe it's you did at some point in the past, but you know, you have, that's fine. So why do you write? Like really, really? Yeah. Why? I write to see a beautiful text. Because it is not only right. It is not only, yani, um, to cry on on the destiny of no. It's no. to to construct a very beautiful and very complicated uh, uh, language. To, to to you you don't change. Sevre, yani. I I I don't have the illusion to change anything, but I I have the experience that, uh, and and especially when uh, uh, my uh, work is translated to uh, to uh, languages to language very far from my comprehension. And uh, when I'm invited to, for example, India, or uh, and I discover that the people they they read and then and they communicate with me, and then and they love what I wrote, and it's a very big thing. And this doesn't and give you hope. I give it's give me no. I have too many hope. In life, but not uh, to change the world. And I have, uh, for example, hope to to see uh, the boyfriend of my granddaughter, to but make right. some voyage, or uh, yeah, but but, no, but but not the hope to change the world because I have a mission. Right, uh, but if if you write a text in your room, sitting with yourself mm. in Paris, disguised as Beirut. Yeah. And somebody in India reads it, mm. and they're affected by it. And, and they wrote to me. And they write to you, and probably will remember whatever that you are describing for the rest of their life. Yeah. This ability to leave a mark doesn't give you hope in the power mark? of the word? No. On I'm, the person? No, I'm very pleased of myself. I said... Very good. <laughs> well, at least there's that. Very good. Okay. <laughs> and if, if I can communicate déjà, déjà, en anglais, comment tu sais? Already. Already. With an Indian, <laughs> with a, on the Malayalian language, and he write to me, this is hope. The, the hope that uh, we don't need borders. And even the language is not a border. And when I read this kind of letter, they send me, and it's very difficult to have my address, so he, he have to. Right, the publisher. And it's a very big uh, uh, joy. It's a very big joy, but we are a minority. Yani, I, yani, I would, I, I would prefer that my novels uh, to be read by, by millions, and then I will speak to the million and tell them what <laughs> what they have to do. <laughs> but we are really a, a, a film, uh, yani, minority. 
and uh, the 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 joy start on your room on your table to 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 write just one page and to and to look to this page uh, surprised by by your very big talent <laughs> <laughs> Should we open it? Okay, maybe we'll uh, open it up to some questions. If there is. Sabi, please, Sabi. I think this is on, so I have a microphone over here, and Professor Smolin has a microphone over there. So because we're recording this, it would be great if you have a question, if you will ask for the microphone. So does anybody have a question? This gentleman looks like he wants to ask a question. Me? Yes. Okay, I'll yeah. uh, could you wait for the microphone to get to you? Thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you, guys. Second of all, you know, uh, Professor Fashir, you talk about hope a lot, and you ask about kind of what's necessary in order to move towards this new future, whether it's you know a delusion in our mind uh, when it comes to Lebanon and when it comes to the fight that's happening in Lebanon. I'm curious, um, Professor Barakat, what do you think is necessary for that to be a reality? Is it writings and is it, you know, you talked about if millions of people read your book and um, read that information, then you would be able to speak about it and kind of move a people what is necessary when it comes to literature in order to move a people, especially in the case of Lebanon, as divided as we are, whether it's different sects or it's different movements, different fights that we're all going, going through. Um, now you have things like the time, you know, everybody in one part of Lebanon, it's at one time, in the other part, it's another time, you know, and it doesn't come as big as, you know, New Hampshire, it's half of New Hampshire, Kulu Lebanon. Um, and so I'm wondering what you think uh, with literature we can do in order to better that. Taib. <laughs> yani really, uh, like I said, nothing. Not me. Yani I am very, uh, very well uh, uh, known in Lebanon. And every uh, body maybe uh, know that I'm... Uh, a person, uh, yani, a little famous or uh, known, well known, and uh, and they love me. But if I want to, for example, uh, if I want to have uh, like uh, an emploi, um, work, a work, nobody give me work because I'm not enough Christian. I'm not enough Christian. So the Christian don't gonna defend my dossier. And I'm not enough uh, a Muslim also, because I was uh, uh, living in the, I was married with a Muslim and living the other side of, uh, of Beirut. So I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I, yeah, nobody gonna d defend me or uh, apply, appuy, push, 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 push or support my dossier. What, what, what can I, yeah, what, what can I? I'm like a, a little, ya Allah, shukran ya I'm a little traitor for both sides, for all the sides. <clears throat> but I'm, yani, uh, no, uh, I, I'm loved, but we never know why. Yani, they love me, but they don't uh, yani, support me. I just have a quick follow-up, So if it's not literature, what do you think is the great commoner, Philip Nian? You know, you have people who are very divided, not just you know, sect-wise, you have people in Beirut, in Liba'a, in Nabatiyya, wherever it is. These people are very, very different people ideologically and how they think about the situation in Lebanon. 
فوات از ات ذات برينجز اس توجذر اي دونت نو اي دونت نو اند ميبي ان 40 ييرز اور اور فايف ديكيد اور ميبي مور دي ميبي فايند بس بيرسونلي اي دونت نو يعني واي ام جون هايد if i have the solution i don't know <laughs> Anyone else with a question? Hi, and thank you. I, this has really been amazing. Um, we, well, I think as Adeen was talking a little bit about um, what you described really as the process. It was the process that um, was where your satisfaction sort of came from. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit uh, a little bit more about that process for you. Um, you know, you're not trying to change the world. You're not writing to solve everybody's problems or to influence people. But that personal process, what it means, is that if I can, if I'm asking that clearly. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jennifer. It's a really very important question. And it is not easy to find the answer. But you know, for me, writer is not only a pleasure. It's two things at the same time. It's a pleasure and a suffering. Because you are scratching uh, the deep, deep of you. It's not easy. And you can discover too many violent things or uh, um, too many not beautiful things you, and you have to uh, uh, confront this. So uh, it is hard and uh, the beauty of the art, any art, it saves this, this side uh, of this activity. But uh, I, I think um, um, I, I'm lucky because I have uh, two children. And they kept me on, uh, on earth. And they, they don't, like a balloon, and they don't let me go in the, in the adventure of the, and they, they are here, they need, uh, things and they um, and uh, I have to deal with my flesh and I have to deal with uh, yeah, and I don't I don't have yeah, and I have to uh, struggle with my sadness I have to uh, struggle uh, struggle with my uh, uh, kind of uh, let it go, or uh, you know, they 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 take me on um, uh, to, yeah, to the, and it is uh, it is it is not always uh, 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 facile, easy, easy. easy. but. Uh, uh, it's like a, a, a part of um, a part of. I think it's a female question because uh, the fathers can be totally uh, detached, totally yani, uh, free to write and to to go to the. <laughs> no, but they, they, <laughs> but it is not like um, um, being a part of uh, of your body really physically, and you write with, in my case, with your body with, yani, for example, I cannot write if. My daughter or my son are ill. I cannot do it, and it's uh, it's good for me. 
it's good also when I, I become a successful writer. They, yani, they, they it's, it's like a part of this uh, uh, pros, pros, procedures, uh, uh, then you have to keep it there. Yani you have to, I don't know, I, I suppose, for me, only maybe for me. But uh, for me, uh, yani, write, writing, it is not the most important thing in my life. It's very essential, but it is not the only way in life. I can, and I can live without. Maybe I become. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but the part of of having that this flesh matter. It's very important to me as a writer. So, hold on, Steve Swain over here. Now we want to know what the most important thing is in life, uh, <laughs> if, if writing is not the most important. And I remember you talking about uh, your children when they like what you write that pleases you greatly. Yeah, because I like this when they read me. All right. They are very uh, hard critics. <laughs> When they uh, tell me, okay, it's, it is really okay. So my first question, what is the most important? And then about your children, what do they like about your writing? What do they like about your writing? Ah, um, too many things. <laughs> no, they read uh, too much. And my daughter now, uh, she become a novelist. She writes in French. And they <coughs> give me always too many advice in life. They, 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 uh, they uh, advise me to, uh, to listen to, certain, to some music maybe I could not discover by myself, and some, uh, some books, and some, uh, and uh, uh, what they uh, like, I, I think, uh, uh, for example, uh, in my second uh, novel, uh, uh, I, uh, they, they uh, compliment me on too many passages, and they talk about these pages to their friends, and it's a very big victory, because the friends is yani, more. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, they connect me with the new generation, because I'm always afraid to be uh, ancien, to, to be has been, or to be yani, not on the move for the jeunesse, yani, for the new generation. And the 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 student here yani when i w was here in the, uh, 3 years ago maybe four and now they they give you this uh, this uh, feeling to to be really young and, and alive so to be able to create to create and it's, um, it's very wonderful. We have time for one more question. And given what you said about uh, NCIC, I was going to try and get one of the jeunesse to uh, perhaps ask a question. So do, uh, do any of the students want to ask a particular question of Hoda Barakat? They have course. They are not. Uh, but they can uh, ask in front of all these old people. Yeah. <laughs> no one else? OK, this gentleman back there. And the lady here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna come. Uh, hello, I just want to say thanks for doing this. It's amazing. Um, my question is, if uh, would you ever want to move back to um, Beirut? Yes, from time to time, yeah. Move. 
Ah, to <laughs> move to Beirut? Yeah. No, not, not really. Because Beirut is not my Beirut anymore. So it's, uh, it's uh, yani painful to, to go live on the souvenir of a city who not exist anymore. Beirut is not Beirut. Thank but you. I went from time to time to see maybe it's going to apparate, apparate the Beirut or not. <laughs> I... So I know others of you have questions, but uh, we will have time afterwards. You can come up and ask Hoda directly. So will you thank Ezzedine, Tarek, and especially Hoda for this afternoon? Thank you. Thank you.